Dear brothers in Christ, the devil is an idealist. He wants us to expect everything in the church to be perfect, tidy, perky, and growing. On the other hand, the Holy Spirit is a realist. The church always looks like a mess. What'd you expect? The church is a bunch of terminal sinners banded together in a sort of hospice, if you will, surrounded by a world that often isn't eager to repent or to be refreshed by the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Idealism drives us from Christ. It holds up a standard that we can never sustain, and when the failure is evident, drives us to despair. Ah, but the Holy Spirit is a realist and a comforter. Sure, he serves up the law full force, and it will bring us to reach the end of ourselves, our power and our piety and our goodness, but only to let us be grabbed and lifted by the only one who can restore us, the Lord of life, Jesus Christ. In Acts chapter 3, Peter says to the lame beggar, I have no silver and gold, but what I do have I give to you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Rise up and walk. What I do have, I give to you. And what is it that Peter did have and gave? It's what you have and give. He explains it later. Men of Israel, why do you wonder at this? Or why do you stare at us as though by our own power or piety we have made him walk? You killed the author of life whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses, and his name, by faith in his name, has made this man strong whom you see and know. And the faith that is given through Jesus has given the man this perfect health in the presence of you all. It isn't our power or piety that accomplishes anything good. It's Christ Jesus, the author of life, who died in our place and was raised from the dead, the first fruits of the grave. And it's his power and piety. It's his holiness, refreshment, and life that you have in baptism, in his word of life, in his body and blood, all delivered to you by the Holy Spirit. All this, not just for the world and our congregations, but for you, dear brother, beloved of the Lord. What joy to be given what you've been given. And what joy to be able to give away that which we never earned or won. Sure, many men of Israel were angered by this token of the coming resurrection of all flesh. Many get angry at our Lord's gifts today, too. But so what? It just gave Peter and John and gives us more time to confess Jesus. Jesus trumps every evil plot against him. Jesus overcomes every scheme of the evil one by letting himself be crucified. Jesus takes into himself all of mankind's hatred and the full righteous anger of God for all sin. Jesus answered death with life, life that is unrelenting. Jesus did this for you and for all the challenging people he puts along your path. In these gray and latter days, through you, whose life is a high doxology, the Lord gives love to your family, to your neighbors, to your congregation. Through you, he hands on not your power and piety, but that which you have received, the gift that is always for you, life, forgiveness, and joy through Christ. Hal, Bev, and I give thanks to God for you. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus.